Hello everybody, this is Mark Kumar, your lifestyle entrepreneur and a proud founder of Simple Podcast Cloud, a podcast hosting company that provides you with unlimited everything. So today's show, we're going to be talking with my another dear friend, another amazing podcaster who's going to share his story as to why he got started into podcasting and how much does he really loves it. So please take your time to introduce yourself to my audiences and tell us a little bit about yourself. All right, uh, thanks, Mark, and uh, hello, everyone. Uh, so, well, I uh, my name is Amar, and uh, I am the co-founder of Gatha Story. Uh, I'm actually recording this. This is actually the first uh, interview from uh, our makeshift podcast uh, studio, and you can see a bit of construction work still going on in the background, some finishing required. But uh, other than that, uh, I have been a podcaster for over five years now, and uh, I'm the co-founder of Gatha Story. I've uh, been a podcast listener since 2002 or three. Probably the term wasn't even coined by, back then, but we'll talk about that, uh, uh, that a little later. Uh, I live in Bengaluru, India with my wife and our uh, six-year-old dog, uh, Buddy, and uh, been really having a blast. Um, you know, uh, we'll be launching uh, our 16th, 16th, 16th podcast at the end of this month. So really, really, really loving uh, the whole opportunity to be behind the mic and speak. Awesome, man. Tell me, how did you get started in terms of, I'm sure you said you listen to podcasts, right? So what inspired you to say, hey, I want to start my own podcast show because it's so cool. <laughs> You know, somebody once told me, Mark, if nobody is listening to you, start a podcast. Really? <laughs> wow, I have not heard no, that, that before. that was not the reason why I did. <laughs> okay. So, so tell me why, why did you start it? Like, what was your um, inspiration? What was your motivation? What got you? like, I need to share my message. Sure, sure. So, um, I would like to answer this question in two parts, right? Sure. Uh, number one, uh, and the, the short answer is, uh, I started it and then, you know, my wife and I co-founded Gatha Story, our podcasting uh, uh, startup, uh, because we wanted to bring great, uh, you know, storytelling experiences, uh, particularly in the Indian market, in Indian languages, uh, which again, you know, roll the clock back to 2015, uh, you either had stories that were, uh, you know, narrated by celebrities, uh, you know, for burnt on a, on a CD, sold in airports, kiosks, right? So you're talking about uh, a CD worth close to, what, $15, and hardly 100 or 200 of them would get, uh, get sold. And people would say there is no market for audio storytelling in India. Otherwise, you'd have really badly produced audio sent over WhatsApp. Uh, WhatsApp was big back in 2015 as well. And WhatsApp compresses the audio. So the listening experience was really poor. The question was, hey, where's the middle ground? You know, where is the story that I want to narrate to my kids or, you know, the kind of stories my parents used to narrate to me or, or, or things like that? There was none. So we said, okay, let's go ahead and start it. Yeah. Okay. So that's the, that's the short version. We didn't find what we wanted to hear before we went ahead and started it. Uh, the longer version is, um, you know, we'd been, I and, and then, you know, after we got married, uh, Murad, my wife, we benefited a lot from podcasting. Yeah, so, you know, back in when I was in uh, grad school, I used to listen to shows uh, when I was uh, in, in the in the United States, uh, you know, long drives to long commutes to work, used to listen to shows like, uh, I think, the manager tools, uh, they're still around 17 years, I think, or 15 years uh, or so, they're still around. Uh, then, uh, you know, there were shows like uh, CEO Exchange, which was a PBS uh, show, a TV show converted into audio, right, where you had two CEOs uh, talking to each other, hosted, you know, and, and facilitated by a moderator. You know, right. wonderful shows, which really helped me decide the next steps in my career. And this is a medium that uh, really helped me decide to apply to, to business school. After my business school, I really, you know, helped me change my career. Uh, after, uh, you know, uh, I actually thought I would, you know, I, 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 had, I did everything that I wanted to do uh, after my MBA. Um, that, you know, that void that I was feeling in, in life, in, in career, professionally speaking, uh, podcasting helped me fill that void, you know. So this medium has been a part of my professional journey uh, ever since 2002 or 2003. And I thought it was a great way to actually contribute uh, to, you know, um, uh, and the, the best way of doing that was probably starting a show ourselves. I am so glad <clears throat> you said that because now I have like a gazillion cushions and this is going to be a great podcast because 
I feel like because I've been told, like like you said in your uh, talk, uh, previous just just now, that in your in India a lot of people don't do podcasting, and that's why do you want to share your message? And you're like, hey, I want to start my podcast. So that's a great great story because like you are in a position where there is not really well known podcasting experiences that people know about it, and then you come out of the blue of like, hey. I got a podcast. You should go listen to it. So how do you go about telling people, like, what is a podcast? People who may not know, like, <laughs> see what I mean? So this is what I'm saying. It's going to be a great conversation. People who yeah. don't know what the hell is a podcast, like, how do you go tell them about it and then tell them in a way that they will actually want to listen to it or know about it? Like, I guess in a way it would be like, how do you educate them to say, hey, this is a podcast. This is going to help you. And then you should listen to my podcast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wonderful questions, Mark, and wow. Uh, let me let me try and be as brief in my answers because uh, you know uh, the, the question can be answered in in many ways. Yep. Um, let's start with where we are today. You know, fortunately, in 2020, uh, the word podcast is familiar largely among the youth. So uh, I would say the demographic of 18 to about 35 or 18 to 40. Uh, in in cities in India, uh, you don't have to explain to them what exactly a podcast is, which is wonderful. Unfortunately, in 2015, that was not the case. So when we started out, um, the challenge at that point in time was, uh, we, you know, the moment you tell them a podcast, first thing they obviously think of is an iPod. Oh, I need an Apple device. You know, Apple devices are expensive, so I can't listen to the audio at all. So we had to take that barrier away. We actually started calling it uh, streaming audio which also did not work because streaming audio connotates with music. Next barrier for us was, oh, it's a, it's a children's storytelling show. Once we launched Balgata, which is like our flagship show. Um, once we started that, uh, people started uh, qu- uh, questioning us. Oh, you don't have a YouTube channel? You mean you can have uh, children's stories in audio as well? Because at that time, the only offering was uh, animated video uh, on YouTube for children's stories bunch of barriers, uh, not to mention at that point in time uh, on Android devices, you had about 12 or 13 different players uh, or apps. Uh, Google Podcast was not there. Fortunately, now it's native. So I just have to send you the link on your Android phone. You click the link and it, you know the audio starts playing. Right. That was not the case in 2015. So you, know, you had to ask people, do you have the blue colored app or the orange colored app or the red colored app? Uh, then somebody would say, no, you know, I have this app, uh, which is like Green Square that my friend recommended. And I'm like scratching my head. And, what <laughs> app is this? You know, right. because that, that app would not be available in the Play Store in India. Right. It would probably be available in Australia or, or the United States. It was difficult. It was extremely difficult at that point in time. Uh, not to mention, uh, you know, and, and I, Android, like I said, you literally had to handhold people. Yeah. So uh, those were barriers. Uh, fortunately... Uh, you know, there were a few people who were willing to work with us right. uh, saying that. Uh, so, you know, so let's say Mark is listening to my uh, my show. Yep. Uh, suddenly there is somebody else coming in and asking, hey, how do I subscribe to this particular show? I, I use an Android phone with so and so app. You know, I know Mark has done something so I can probably connect Mark and that new listener virtually. So right. and, and they can help each other out. Right. Right. So this community kind of uh, helping out uh, situation started. We in fact even made, uh, well, I made uh, some videos, uh, some walkthrough videos in in, in Hindi, Marathi, enough, and and uh, English, a few regional languages on how to listen to podcasts. In fact, you know they were they were so poorly made. I, I'm still proud of them, by the way. They were so yeah. poorly made that uh, you know I cringe when I look at them, but they worked. You know, right. uh, now next so. Maybe around 2015 end, uh, sorry, I'm sorry, uh, middle of 2016, a simple thought came to my mind that what if we use WhatsApp to start communicating people about about uh, our podcast shows? Yeah. Um, so again, you know, uh, the logic here is what if we use WhatsApp as our our you know our interpretation of a mailing list because very few people in India would read emails, but Almost everyone checks their messages on WhatsApp. So we set up a WhatsApp broadcast group and we started sending them the link. So, you know, click on one link. It takes you to the website where the uh, the web page is created with the embed player. Click a second time, the, you know, the audio starts playing. Yeah, Fair. that actually increased our conversions significantly. And not just that, you know, 
we were looking like uh, so our list grew to about thousand odd people uh, it became a nightmare eventually and maybe that's a point to talk later um, <laughs> it became a victim of its own success because the click through rates were great people would share the link with others saying that hey i listened <clears> to this story this is great go ahead and click on that so that's how we started uh, it became more and more complicated as we started adding more languages. So now we've got shows in six languages, English plus Hindi plus, you know, uh, four regional languages in India. We're looking to add three more. So we started, you know, now, now do a math, uh, you know, uh, I don't want to bore your audience with the with, uh, mathematics or the, the science or, uh, behind it. But, you know, by training, I'm an engineer. So that engineer in me wakes up at times. So you're looking <laughs> at six languages. You're looking at 15 podcasts and you're looking at about eight or 10 different channels where uh, you can listen to the show, right. right? So I did not, or we did not want to maintain close to 1,000 different feeds. You know, imagine the social media promotion effort it will take. Imagine the amount of customization, you know? So the more you try to simplify, the more we realize it's a complex problem. Right. But I'll stop at that because, you know, we don't have a solution for it right now. And, and in, you know, uh, obviously someone in the audience does, we'll be happy to hear from them. All right. And that's a great, great strategy. I never even thought about using WhatsApp as a communication line to tell you people, hey, go check out my podcast. It's like, wow, <clears throat> they didn't know. Thank you for sharing that. That's like, I will definitely sure. be using that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure people who, who are listening to it, they're also going to be using it because obviously WhatsApp is international. And then just like anything else, I think only question that I have is like when you want to send a broadcast, right? You say you send a broadcast. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you have to have a person as part of your content. You could send a broadcast to unlimited people. So like how to match your phone list is like what thousand plus, like you said. <laughs> 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 so that's a great personal connection. Like if you have thousand people listening to your show and then they turn around, even just thousand people share with two of individual that's like wow it grows us significantly so that's a great yeah. you know channel whatever yeah, so it let's does. <clears throat> it does and uh, in fact uh, i think they may still have it online for podcast movement in 2018 we had actually done a video walkthrough on how to use uh, whatsapp for promoting your podcast so you know if it's still online i'd be happy to share the link otherwise i'll send you the link to the video probably you know if your audience can again benefit for it in fact if there is a better smarter way of doing it again we'd be, we'd be you know happy to work uh, to try that out as well um some so some basics on that by the way uh, mm -hmm. number one we use broadcast we don't use a whatsapp group uh, for the simple reason you know number one is privacy i don't want uh, you know if you and i are listening to it but i don't want to know that you're listening to it unless you and i know each other right that's right. the logic uh, in the in the Indian uh, legal system or the uh, you know in the legal framework, uh, if we start using you know one is to many communication, we have to register ourselves as a telemarketer, okay. which we did. Okay. Right. It, that may not be the requirement in every jurisdiction, but that was the other case. Third is the audience. You know, it's women and children who are the primary audience. Right. You don't want a group wherein everyone can see everybody else's profile. Right. Um, Broadcast comes with its limitation, 256 members at a time. So when we're talking about four, you know, thousand plus, we're looking at four different broadcast groups or broadcast lists, uh, which became a nightmare to handle. But then therein the opportunity lies. I could then actually segregate the audience time zone wise. So uh, we have one list, for example, for audience from India, another list from audience from Middle East and Europe, a third for the two US time zones, right? Uh, the advantage there being, so uh, the U.S. East Coast and U.S. Uh, West Coast, the advantage in that case becomes that uh, I can actually send the link at, you know, 7.30 or 8 p.m. in your local time for that particular show. So the uh, bedtime story reaches to you at your bedtime or around your bedtime. I am yeah. astonished. Wait, you could do that in WhatsApp? You, you could set a you time? You segregate the list. Yeah, 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 absolutely. You segregate the list part by phone number or the, the area code mm -hmm. and send it at the local time. You know, you, you published it. So we publish it at midnight India time mm -hmm. uh, or, you know, uh, close to that. Uh, right. But the feed goes at 730. So, you know, there is a bit of a ramp up anyways before you promote it to your core audience. Right, right. Uh, but the point is for them, you get the feed at, you know, when you need it. You know, when your child is really telling you, hey, I need to listen to a story, there is a story available, right? Okay. Um, we are trying with uh, Telegram. I think Telegram manages the whole nightmare a lot better. Uh, okay. In fact, I'm, I'm, I'm subscribed to a few 
uh, Telegram mega groups. Uh, the government of India, for example, has a group for COVID. It's got 2.2 million subscribers. So, you know, one click of a button, 2.2 million people receive the communication. You know, I would love right. to have a list like that for my show. Uh, <laughs> so can you tell, tell you, can you tell somebody who may not know what a Telegram is? What, what it okay. is it, what sure. is it, and how does it work? Sure, sure. So uh, similar to WhatsApp, Telegram is also another messenger, uh, except that WhatsApp from Facebook, Telegrams is, uh, Telegram is from uh, Russia. Okay. So uh, it's, a, it's a very similar application, but in terms of features, it is much more advanced. Uh, in the sense, uh, I think WhatsApp will also introduce that. So, you know, the, the two clicks that I mentioned earlier, Mark, that mm -hmm. click number one, it takes you to a web page. Click number two, it starts playing. Right. Uh, in Telegram, it does that within that. So you don't even have to leave Telegram. It will start, the embed player will start playing within Telegram. Oh. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, data privacy, it's a lot better. Okay. Uh, in the sense, because it's a wider group, number one, mm -hmm. uh, it's a broadcast group. Uh, so you can, you know, anybody can subscribe. You can only see the number of subscribers, but you cannot see who else is a subscriber there. Okay. Uh, it is banned in certain regulations. Okay. So in fact, ironically, the Telegram website is blocked in India, even if, even, even though, you know, government uses Telegram. Okay. Uh, Telegram's blocked in Russia, again, you know. For a variety of reasons, <laughs> but the point, yeah, it's, it's, it's one of the Wait, it's, things, okay. <laughs> Interesting. Um, if any of your listeners, or if there is a particular audio or a video that you want to share that people, your your audience can download, mm -hmm. you can actually send files through Telegram, which actually compresses the audio at a you know in a in a slightly better uh, reasonable uh, ratio compared to WhatsApp because. WhatsApp really compresses it and makes a you know, makes a mess out of it, right? Mm -hmm. um, or any you know you can share files. Uh, it's a bigger file uh, sharing uh, capacity within Telegram. Uh, okay. It's I think about 1.5 gigabytes. So if there is a particular video that you want to share, uh, mm -hmm. if you are doing a video, so this interview for example, if this were to be made available as a downloadable version to your audience, you can do it through Telegram group, right? Um, I'll probably stop there because I think I'm I'm sounding like a spokesperson for them for a, for a tool that we're not really using right now. <laughs> All right, cool. And it's fair fair enough because you know, like I said before, like we'll see where the conversation goes, and you know, you never know where the conversation is going to go because every single thing that you're going to share, it will help someone along the line in terms of podcasting. So let's circle back around to your podcast. So tell me about your mm -hmm. podcast, like about like what, how, who is your ideal listener for your podcast? Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So a uh, majority of our shows now, and I'd mentioned the number 1515 shows for us, right? So we got uh, six uh, shows, uh, you know, mm -hmm. I could put them in, into six buckets, sure. but they are, most of them are catered around the women and children segment, kids and family segment, I'm sorry. Sure. Okay. So the, the primary audience is the child, you know, so we got Balgatha. Balgatha literally means stories for children. Uh, we got Devgatha, which is mythology stories. Uh, we got Veergatha, which is stories of bravery. Um, so, you know, Government of India has this great program where they, they facilitate, felicitate uh, children who have done bravery, you know, acts of bravery. And this has been around since 1956. Uh, you know, very few people are aware about it. So we thought, hey, why not actually create a show which actually honors the work that these guys did, right? Uh, we've got Fairy Tales of India. Uh, that's, the, that's the other show, again, uh, available in two languages. So other than Balgatha, most of our shows are available in two languages, yeah? So we are really catering to two sets of audience. Uh, number one would be the uh, people who live in the metro cities, you know, the, the 10 million plus population cities, the Delhi's, the Mumbai's, the Bengaluru's, where, where we are. And the other uh, largely regional would be for the Hindi speaking belt. And you mentioned, Mark, uh, you you, orig you originally from Delhi, right? Or you're yes. from Delhi area. I, yeah. I am from oh. New Delhi, yes. Oh, wonderful. So, yeah. you know, the, the four or five cities in the national capital region. Uh, mm -hmm. And then, of course, I uh, you know that the, the, the bigger cities in northern India. Uh, the indoors, the uh, the Kanpur's, the Lucknow's, and so on, right? Right. It's a different audience uh, in the sense that uh, you know they are native Hindi speakers. They would love, love to list, learn English. So right. what we do is same story is published in two languages. Yeah. So you listen to the Hindi version to enjoy the story. You right. listen to the English version to try and learn the language. Oh, very nice. Very creative. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, very so creative. That's our audience, you know. Um, in fact, uh, just before our call, I was actually quickly looking at our listener base. Uh, uh -huh. About 90% of the listeners uh, come from India. Okay. 
okay. uh, about uh, 60% of them come from the, the Hindi speaking belt, so to speak, mm -hmm. the cities that I mentioned. Mm -hmm. And uh, majority of them are, you know, parents between 25 and 45, which would be, you know, fam young families with kids uh, under the age of 10. And okay. let me tell you one thing, Mark, when we launched Balgata, we actually launched on WhatsApp. I, I wanted to actually mention that. Okay. Uh, interesting fact, we launched Balgatha as a beta on WhatsApp in 2016 May. You know, every day we would send one story alternating in English and Hindi at 7.30 p.m. Okay. And, you know, we did that for 10 days. On day seven, I asked the uh, the listeners for uh, the, the broadcast group for a feedback saying that, is this even making sense for you guys? Right. They said, this is wonderful, except that daily is too much. Probably you should scale it down. So um, that that audience group, 70% of the listeners were women between 25 and 45 and lived in metro cities, India. Okay. Five years later or four years later, it's the same audience group. You know, the profile has not changed. Right. Even though the show has grown. So that's where we are. Uh, we do have other shows. Uh, so my kitab is on book publishing in India, targeted largely towards authors who are looking to use a book uh, you know, as a brand building exercise. Right. Uh, then we got, um, uh, well, I had a show earlier on, on digital marketing, uh, another one on startup scenario in India, um, which is like a five minute, you know, five news items in five minutes and, and kind of be done with it, uh, startup mm -hmm. nibbles. Um, and we would be launching a few other shows. So, you know, Nural's working on a show on insurance and financial, uh, you know, smartness for women. Sure. Uh, I'm looking to start a show on sustainability because I also, you know, I also consult with an organization in that space and that's something near and dear to my heart. So we're trying to expand uh, our circle a bit, but, you know, you're probably going to stay core to this kids and family segment even now. Okay. I am so glad you mentioned that because I truly feel like you are what I call as a lifestyle entrepreneur. Because you're like, hey, I'm really good at this. Let me create a business out of it. So what that does, it, it really helps your life. Because sometimes when you have a business, then you have to, you know, build your life around the business. But you did the other one around. You build your business around your life, which is great thing to do. Because every single day, you're going to get up passionate and, you know, and you're going to be excited about it. Rather than like, oh, my God, I got to go to work. Damn, <laughs> you know, I love that. This is amazing because some people are like, hey, you should totally just stick with one niche industry, whatever word you want to use it, and that's that. The way I look at it, I'm like, wait, you don't do only one thing. You are not just good at one thing. What happened, let's just say, uh, on a Monday, you're really good at that, and next year or next next year, you might be good at a completely different thing. You want to stick with the one that you have because... To validate that idea, you, you know, especially in the time that we are with the whole pandemic, there are people who are like so strict minded. I'm only good at that. And they're out of business now. Yeah. You know, so. Sure. No, and, and that's also a great way to, you know, keep learning new things. Exactly. Uh, and, and to this point, and particularly coming to the point of pandemic, and I'm so glad you, you mentioned it, mm -hmm. Amar. Um, we need to look that, look at this as a as a you know learning uh, opportunity for for yeah. us also you know to to reskill or upskill yourself um, you know probably in under a minute I, I just want to tell this because this sure. conversation happened just this afternoon with my former boss okay. so I was in real estate and construction uh, till you know even during before starting Gatha Story I was again with Amazon setting up their physical you know distribution centers uh, right. here in India. Uh, so, you know, one of my former bosses from my real estate days and him and I were having a conversation. He is now into data center consultancy, you know, so from bread and butter construction, your office fit outs, your retail store fit outs. He is specialized into that area. Okay. Yeah? And even though because of the pandemic and the state of the economy, mm -hmm. construction is not doing well at all. Right. But there are two sectors which are doing really well. One is data center and other is healthcare. So. That's what we were talking that this person, you know, uh, he invested in learning, acquiring skills, and now he can use the jargon. He can make his business pitch as confidently as somebody who's been in the technology sector for like 20 years, you know, exactly. So for him at his level, he's probably about 55, you know, daughters are growing up. That's job right. security for him. Right. Yeah. Not too many people at that age in this market can say that. Exactly. I couldn't agree 100% with you. You know, it's like, you know, some people are so strict 
And so like, this is what I know, this is what I'm gonna do, and that's that. I'm so glad your former boss, like, okay, I know this, but it's not working, let's change it, and let's look at it as a change, as an opportunity, as a compared to problem, you know? Yeah. Definitely, so, yeah. So let's get a little bit technical. So tell me, how do you set up your podcast recording stuff in terms of like mic, your recording? Like, first of all, let's start with when you are recording your podcast, is it a solo podcast or is it interview based or how does, what's your format of your podcast? Wonderful. Um, again, a great question because of the, the variety of shows that we do, not that, you know, we are a mega network, but uh, right. we do aspire to be one someday. Um, because of the variety of shows, a majority of the content is storytelling. Okay. And there are one or two shows uh, which are interview based or conversational in nature, right? So, um, and, and so let me start with the, the easier part, the, the interview based shows, right? Sure. Um, I still use uh, the ATR uh, 2100 USB mic. In fact, that's one, that's the one we are using for our conversation right now. Okay. okay? Uh, somehow never felt the need to upgrade. In, in fact, uh, Amazon had a sale for uh, today is Independence Day. I probably should have mentioned that and, you know, Independence Day in India. Um, so a happy Independence Day. Amazon had a sale. You know, they had some great microphones and I looked at it and I looked at my microphone and I said, nah, no need to change it. Right. Um, so that's one. Uh, we actually started out our podcasting uh, in September 2015 with a 11 year old uh, Dell Latitude laptop. Uh, back then 11 now it's close to what 17 or 18 years um it was running linux uh, it had a noisy fan and we were using this usb mic right uh, not the best combination not the you know smartest way to start a podcast uh, but we you know again you know we were in india india we are blessed with a, a lot of um, ambient noise so far as the noise coming out of the laptop was you know, you're being so politically correct <laughs> the no, 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 i actually enjoy it uh, okay. believe it or not mark i live close to a construction site uh, okay again you know i come from the background and my wife keeps joking you know construction will never leave me even if i leave the, the sector so <laughs> okay. there's drilling there's all night concrete work going on you know they're okay. cutting steel rebar so there's a lot of noise you know you can't you can't really control it right right so um we actually focus a lot more on on noise control rather than you know sound quality enhancement right right if you know those those of you who are more uh, technology technically inclined in the audio space might understand the difference between the two uh, but in a nutshell you know we focus more on how do i cut off the noise that that i cannot control that's coming from outside sure once that's taken care of i can invest a lot more in improving the way the conversation is going on right so um, that's how we started uh, we now, you know, again, like I said earlier, there's a makeshift studio. We had come up with one design that did not work out, so I had to tear everything out. So there, there was insulation, actually, the acoustical foam insulation right on this wall. Uh, okay. Took all of that out. Uh, you know, we are redoing it right now, and you know, that's where we are at right now. So it's a it's a MacBook Pro with uh, ATI USB mic. Uh, depending on the show, we use a mixer. Right now, I'm not using one because sure. in the redesign, there is you no know, there's no space for it. Okay. That's one, right? Uh, we we uh, and typically I use either Zencaster. We tried with Clean Feed. In fact, I'd even written a blog post on Medium. You know, seven ways to record podcast interviews online. Okay. Um, I probably can send probably send a link to it. I need to update it because now there are probably twenty three different ways of doing it, right? I written <laughs> that post in two thousand and seventeen. <laughs> now right. there, there there are many other options, right? And, and, learned, uh, and next week it'll something. be like thirty more, you know? Absolutely. And you know, in this conversation, I learned there is something called a streamyard. So probably I need to go go ahead and update that link anyway. So yeah. And thank you for introducing me to it, uh, sure. Mark. So. When it comes to our storytelling show, this is where it gets really interesting. Okay, and and, and I'm probably going to take two minutes just to tell you the oh, give you the take, take your time. I love storytelling. <laughs> oh, love it. Love it. <laughs> our narrator. So, like I said before, you know, we we have multiple shows and in six languages. So our narrators are all distributed. They all narrate out of home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very few of them actually have a home studio. Okay, but unless you are a really really an audio snob. My invitation is please listen to the show and 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 tell us whether it was you know it's good quality or not for a home studio or a home record yeah so what we do in this case is that and and the audience are probably in six or seven different cities 
or the narrators, I'm sorry, are in six or seven different cities. Uh -huh. We work with two wonderful editors, one of whom is in southern India, the other one somewhere in central India. So it's, it's a nice remote setup that we work with. They typically use a Zoom H1n okay. or um, at a minimum an iPhone 6. In the Android space, it's a OnePlus 5 or equivalent device. Okay. And I'll tell you why we are, you know, why we standardize the hardware. Uh, question number one, I mean, issue number one is the ambient noise that I mentioned, you know. Um, use any number of pillows, you know, we, we actually have a picture of one of our narrators. She had a bed sheet over her head and like six pillows. She's sitting on a bed <laughs> and recording. And incidentally, she has a five-year-old and a two-year-old dog. So the two of them are like peeking through and, and what's mama doing? You know, there's a beautiful <laughs> picture that we have. Um, by the way, uh, Shirali, the narrator I'm talking about, uh, she's probably recorded uh, over 500 episodes for us so far. And, you know, they've gathered something like a 3 million plus listens. So, you know, we got something right, even though it was, a, you know, not the best way of recording it, right? Um, the reason for standardizing the hardware was that it becomes a no-brainer for them to upload the audio. You know, uh, the standard, it has to be a web file. Uh, it has to be uploaded through the cloud platform. We use a, a service called KUFA, K-O-O-F-R. You know, okay. uh, it's the easiest way for them to record and upload. Okay. The narrators have the access to the recorded audio. Uh, the editors, I'm sorry, they go ahead and pick up the file. We do a quick sanity check whether everything's working out fine. Uh, the editors go ahead and do their bit. They go ahead and re-upload and we're done. Yeah. Okay. Uh, at any point in time, we actually, uh, even today, uh, we haven't, you know, we, all our shows for all our podcasts up to March 2021 are recorded, edited, uploaded on the server schedule. Right. And we don't, we're talking about 250 odd episodes at this point. In, I'm not bragging. Uh, and and I'll tell you what's a, what's the story behind it, okay? And it's not come easy. Okay. Yeah, uh, I spent days. I've I've been in that situation, Mark, wherein episodes going to go live half an hour from now. I've not received the audio file yet, let alone editing it. Forget the show notes. You know, I've been through that disaster multiple times. So one day, my wife and I had a conversation. I said, "We need to standardize this." Well, she said, "We need to standardize this." Uh, <laughs> of course, I don't know what's going on that. give the credit where it's due. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, we actually worked out uh, so that the whole process, it's a beautiful creative process, creating a podcast episode. But then we, we had to, you know, literally take a knife and chop it into pieces. So we got like 19 steps, which are outlined, mm -hmm. standardized. There's a timeline defined for everything. There's a SLA for all of the narrators, the editors. And we, you know, the moment the story is sent, or the, the text is sent off to them for narration, they have to turn it around within 48 hours. The editor gets an alert. They have another 48 hours to do their bit. And we batch all our production. So typically it will be seven or eight episodes which are recorded by the narrator in a single session. Mm -hmm. Editor batches them. They have about a week to go ahead and deliver the entire batch. If it's a standalone, they have two days. If it's a batch, they have a week. We get the audio. We go ahead. Uh, I myself have... Uh, you know, a, an SLA of another week to put in the metadata, the, you know, any other links that may be there, sure. references, the imagery, whatever. And uh, we upload everything. And it's done. Okay. Uh, worked out very well uh, so far for us. But um, here's, the, here's the button. Eh? We use Audioboom for our um, uh, me media hosting. Okay. You know, we had a wonderful relationship with Audioboom. In fact, Audioboom in India and Gatha Story started their journeys together in January 2016. They had a great team in India. Audioboom took a decision to move out of the India market and concentrate only on US, Canada and Australia, I believe, and UK. So, you know, our content will still stay with them, but we lost out on the relationship. So we had to migrate everything out of Audioboom and move on to a different uh, media host. Holy cow. 800 odd episodes, uh, you know, uh, 15, 16 different feeds, updating it at each and every player. So we are in that phase right now. Yeah, we are, we are undergoing that pain, that chaos. So we, again, just like the WhatsApp experience, we became the victim of our own success. Holy cow. Because wow. we standardized and scheduled and overachieved everything, now we, we have to undo everything and redo it as well. Yeah. So my advice would be don't go beyond two months, you know, don't be over ambitious. 
Okay. Uh, two months is a good enough opportunity to recalibrate in case something happens to the show. You want to tweak the format. Uh, you get the audience feedback that something's not working. You probably want to you know, do it. If you have an interview based show, you want to move it to a monologue or you want to move it to a panel based or a discussion based show that two months gives you enough opportunity to, you know, retweak and recalibrate. Well, probably right. I'll stop with that because I can probably go on on this particular experience and I can tell you it's not <laughs> fun. <laughs> oh, I can relate. I can relate to it. Definitely. I've been to a few situations. So what I want to ask you is like speaking of your our podcast hosting company, like what are the things that you look for if you want to have a podcast hosting company? Hmm. Wow. Um, I would look for a relationship rather than support, number one. And, and you know, sure. um, I'll tell you why. We started out with uh, Lipsyn and we didn't know what the hell we were doing. Okay. Yeah, so we just followed the tutorials. Fortunately, back in 2015, again, they had very good tutorials and I think it's only improved over a period of time. But how do you migrate from host A to host B? Great. You know, some of them have walkthroughs. OK, this is how you do it. And, you know, follow this step, this step, this step. Well, it may not work for everyone. You know, sometimes you need that handhold. Right. You know, can I reach out to a human? Can I reach out to some community, some forum where I can get the help that I need? Gotcha. Right. Fortunately for us, we had enough support in the ecosystem, you know, migrating 15 feeds across five players, uh, five different uh, streaming apps right. um, required a lot of a lot of effort, a lot of uh, support, a lot of hand holding from a few people. Right. right. So that's number one I would look for. Uh, secondly, in fact, uh, I think a couple of days ago in the same Facebook podcasting group, Mark, where you and I got connected, right. uh, some, somebody had asked a question about a podcast host. And, uh -huh. you know, I tried to get a little, little bit technical about it. I probably overwhelmed the person who had asked the question. Right. But uh, these are the three, other than the, the, the connect, uh, these are the three things that I would look for. Uh, okay. Number one, um, you know, obviously uh, you're in the hosting space, so you know, but I'll probably preach to the choir a little bit. Is your host uh, charging you in terms of storage or bandwidth or, you know, is, is it per feed? Right. Because there are different pricing models, right? Uh, Lipsyn does it per feed. Uh, some of them may do it by, uh, you know, they give you a storage space, unlimited number of feeds, unli unlimited number of shows and no limit on the downloads, etc. Some of them may do it. Uh, they may have a cap on the bandwidth, you know, which they roughly translated to you pay X dollars a month. 25,000 listens are covered in your plan. If you exceed that, migrate to the next plan, right? Yep. I don't think that is a, you know, that that's great. That may work for them as a provider. That may not work for me. If I have single show, part, podcast X may meet my requirement. Mm -hmm. If I'm just starting out and I'm probably getting 5,000 listens a month, podcaster Y might work out for us. Yep. But think long term, yeah? What if we move from one show to, let's say, five shows? Is your current podcast host the best equipped to help you out as you grow? Right. Number one. Number two is if your listenership grows, do they have the best set of integrations with multiple players? Or you know, if your listenership is coming from a particular channel, do they have the right integration? Well, technically, it's a matter of adding the RSS feed and you're good to go. Yep. Right. But are the analytics connected two ways? We found that. Uh, it was a one click integration for certain players with our previous host, but the analytics was not too way. When you say not too way, explain that a little okay. bit if you don't mind. Yeah, uh, let me explain that. Sure. If you go to, uh, and I'm just going to use a random a random name, sure. uh, you know, if you go to uh, Amar's podcasting website, right. where, where people can listen to streaming audio, mm -hmm. on my website, it shows that probably 100 people have listened to a particular episode. That 100 does not get reflected on your podcast host uh, analytics. Because that data is not traveling back, which means there is some problem with the feed or I have done something shady, which is download all the content and re-upload it on my server. Gotcha. Right. Right. So that's that's a long and short of it. You know, you find your own answer. Find what is best for you. Uh, right. We found that Lipsyn was not, and I'm not bad mouthing them. They're wonderful. We, right, we right. started out with them. Uh, in fact, I um, on social media, the Lipson, you know, Twitter person, the person who manages the Twitter account for Lipson and and we usually share a lot of banter. Yeah. <laughs> so I love those guys for that. Um, also, where is your audience coming from? Uh, in India, we get uh, uh, you know a lot of our listenership is from an app called Geo Savan. Okay, yeah, it's from the Reliance Group of Industries. Right. Uh, it used to be called Savan. They're incidentally New York based as well. Savan. 
but they got acquired by Geo, and you know that's where they are at. Right. We get a good chunk of our listenership through another app called Ghana. Yes, so, you know, I literally just learned about it. Like uh-huh. Ghana also hosts his podcasts. I was like, I yes. didn't know that. Like that's pretty cool. Yes, they do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we get about 18, 15 to eighteen percent of our listenership through Ghana. Okay. okay. And Ghana and Lipson have a tie-up, so it's a one-click integration, and same, you know, same thing that I talked about. So if I were to develop the uh, audience who listens through Ghana, mm-hmm. I probably should be hosting with them. Right, Absolutely. because then this you know support kicks in. That's when the uh, probably uh, the you know the if the analytics that two-way traffic is that uh, is not happening, that can probably happen. So that's where we are at. Um, audio boom. So we learned as well as we got a little bit smarter. Not that we are very smart right now, but uh, we learned audio boom used Spreaker's CDN for serving the audio files. Right. Right. Um, Spreaker uses Amazon Cloudfront. Ah, uh, I see. Okay. In turn, right? Right. So the question is, if I'm, you know, and, and you know that uh, very well, uh, technically, I can host all my media on Amazon Cloudfront myself. I know, don't need any of these guys. Right, right. Right? But then the question arises, are they offering you, uh, you know, um, on an opportunity to host a private feed, number one? Sure. So that you can work with only selected set of players, so that you are in control of the where the audio is getting heard. And number two is obviously the analytics. Right. Yeah. So I'm sorry I went into a bit of a banter and I gave. Oh no! Trust me, banter. I love this. The people who are a podcasters, they're mm-hmm. gonna really, really appreciate that because some of them who are just starting out, or some of people who are advanced level, they may not even thought about all these things. So that's beautiful information. Yeah, please continue. I'm enjoying this. Sure, sure. Okay, thank you. Um, so a lot of them say anchor, right? And and I think they, that seems to be the flavor of the uh, the season uh, for podcast hosting. We did have one show, uh, the one on startups, uh, Startup Nibbles, on Anchor. Personally, I did not find it to my taste. Uh, you know, and I'll leave it at that. Uh, there are pros and cons to it. There have been you know, lots of discussions about it. Yep. And and this is my take. You know, if you want to host with with any host, uh, great, good for you. You know, great. Yep. Uh, be careful of three things. Uh, you know. There is the old guard, the the Lipson, the blueberries, the you know pod beans of the world. They've been around all this while for a reason. Right. Yeah. On again, on a very lighter note, I think Lipson CEO retired, or they they're probably leaving the company, okay. and their compensation was close to like a half a million dollars or something like that. Okay. This is like a very random piece of, of, of trivia that I would probably throw in. Okay. So the first thing for me was if they have the ability to pay half a million to their CEO, they're probably making money, which means they'll be around a lot longer. Right. That's a good sign. I should post with them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, jokes apart, there are the newer, uh, you know, there, there are probably the, the podcast hosts that came in 2015 or thereabouts. And, you know, so they've been around for four or five years now. Their value proposition could be, uh, and, I'll, and I'll not mention the names beyond the old guard for, you know, for sure. obvious reasons. Their value proposition is probably better analytics, you know, great customer support, wonderful integration and blah, and blah. Majority of them are geographically concentrated either in North America or in Europe. So again, you know, is that geography where your majority of our audience is coming from? If they are great, go ahead and sign up with them. Right. Next is uh, the the you know really like last couple of years as the podcasting bubble really started floating up. You know, the the guys who are trying to offer everything, including the kitchen sink, as they say. Right. Do you really want to host with them? Not that they are bad. You know, with you. Excuse me, with due respects, but on one of the um, the deal aggregator sites, AppSumo, there are a couple of deals going on right now for podcast hosting. Okay. The deals, terms of the deal set, first set, we will offer one terabyte of storage, and the description set up to fifty thousand listens. Then I gave them the whole mathematics. Okay. If you're telling me fifty thousand listens, you're probably uploading everything at ninety six kbps mb, uh, you know, mp three which is a disaster for podcasting. And they had to revise and they had to admit that they were wrong. Right. Do you really want to host with a guy who doesn't really know the business that well? Yep. See, it could be an honest and innocent mistake, but really, do you want to give them a benefit of the doubt? Are they going to be around three years from now? Right. And so, right. I, I, long story short, uh, you know, invest the time in research. There are, right. you know, great options. Uh, you know, I've not uh, uh, really, uh, de- you know, delve beyond the five or six in the space. 
sure. I think when we were trying to migrate the feeds, I could see like 19 or 20 different options today. And again, going back to the conversation, right? Sure. There are probably 50 more that we don't know about. Right. Um, but yeah, I'll probably stop with that. <laughs> we so this, 45 minutes mark i can go on for 45 hours it'll never end <laughs> that's what i would say this conversation i love it because you never know where you're gonna lead up to and every single sentence is always helpful to someone in there because you know obviously our podcast is gonna be blown away across the world you might share something other people like amron was amazing i love his podcast because i didn't know all the details you never know mm. Right? And then you're okay. going to get calls from be like, hey, I want you to get on my show. And then you, the next thing you'll be on the TV show. You, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I, right? I have a pace for podcasting and that's for audio podcasting only. Mark. So we'll leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> they used to say, right, I have a pace made for, uh, for radio. So right. I just put a twist to that. Okay. <laughs> hey, the way I look at it, man, whatever life throws at you, you just take it with a smile, you know. Right. If you if you want to be on a TV show, you'd be more excited. I can bet you any amount of money. And your wife is going to be like, yes, honey, you're going. You're going to wear that suit. <laughs> <laughs> She'd be your cheerleader. You're like, yes, you're going to go. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, I will awesome. pass on a good message to her. <laughs> <laughs> sure, man. All right. So tell me where people can find you. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there are three. Well, the best way of reaching me is uh, via email. Uh, amar at amarvyas.com. So that's the that's the best way to reach. Okay. Um, that's number one. I'm on Twitter at me Amar Vyas, and uh, there were a few articles that I mentioned. One is up on uh, Medium, and you know a few other places. I'll probably uh, mention those. But uh, I think the, the you know drop me an email. Typically, I answer within 24 hours, unless it's an emergency. In that case, it may take a week. But I do read all messages and I do respond to all of them. Okay, cool. And last thing I want to ask you, and this is what I call the past and the future journey. So if, let's say, you are 30 years old and the 25-year-old version of you asks you, hey, I want to start a X. X could be a business. X could be a podcast. X could be, I want to, let's just say, I want to become an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. How do I become an entrepreneur? You are 25 and 30 years old. The 25-year-old asks wow. you, like, I want to become an entrepreneur. How can I become an entrepreneur faster? Mm-hmm. What advice would you give them so that will speed track based on what you know right now? Wow. Wow. So five years of learning in less than a minute. Huh? Uh, <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> I think the, the number one uh, advice would be do something that you're passionate about. You know, don't get into something because you think you know it. Yeah, chances are once you once you put on the entrepreneurial hat, there are so many other things that you have no idea about. You know, accounting, accounts receivable, hiring, you know, retention, customer service. It'll it'll drive you mad. So unless you're passionate about it, that hunger to learn, that hunger to you know rise from every you know every time you fall, that uh, that ability to rise will not be there. Number two is uh, be ready uh, for a long journey. You know. Um, We've had days when we had two listens, yep. you know, now, and it was frustrating. We are okay now. We were not, okay. I was not okay personally on that day, but had I remained in that not okay state, I probably would, we would not have be having this conversation. And most important thing is whenever you need help, call out for help. You know, I know everything, I can do everything. And I've been guilty of that. That does not work. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You are preaching to the choir. <laughs> I totally agree. <laughs> okay, and uh, part two would be, what's in store for you and your entrepreneurial journey two years from now? Wow. Wow, that's an interesting question. Um, I will actually go ahead and, and probably repeat a bit of what I just said, you know, okay. so uh, I'm on the fun side of 40 now. So I obviously have not learned uh, things that I had, you know, I had learned or wanted to do when I was 30. So uh, we are actually moving into the subscription uh, space now, a subscription model now for our podcasting, okay. which is gonna require a whole new set of skill sets, right? Customer acquisition, again, the sales funnel, retention, everything that I mentioned about. Sure. I come from a technology and a consulting background. I don't have sales experience, uh, my wife does, but we're doing this on purpose. I am going to wear that hat because that will force me out of my comfort zone. And, you know, that's that's number one. Right. So two years from now, 
I should be confident, you know, Mark Kumar and Amar Vyas have this discussion two years from now, wherein Amar says, this is how I drove my business into a sales oriented business. All right. We'll reach back to you in two years from now and see what happens. <laughs> Hopefully I'll still be smiling. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, man. You, if you have went through wherever you went through and you are here today and we are having this conversation, I have 100% confident you will be in good place two years from now. Because think about it. All the things that you have learned, it made you the man that you are right now. And I yeah, on the knowledge and the headaches, the problems, now you know how to get rid of them faster. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> cool, man. All right, man. Thank you so much, Amar, for being on my podcast. I really appreciate it. And Simple Podcast Cloud team really appreciates it. And we wish you much success and happiness in your life. Thank you so much, Mark. Uh, you know, it was a great conversation. And, uh, you know, I, I hope we stay connected. Uh, again, uh, you know, any way I can help your audience based on the mistakes that we've made, I can probably write a book on it, how not to start a podcast, but always happy to, you know, if, if they reach out, I'm, I'm always happy to uh, help out in any way that I can. <laughs>